We have an exciting program planned for you tonight as three teams go head to head to test their knowledge of engineering and Case Western Reserve University. As part of tonight's program, we'll be presenting some awards and we'll have a special guest speaker. I'm Jim Kilmer, I'm your host for the evening, and I hope you're gonna have as much fun as we do as we test everyone's knowledge throughout the night. Three teams, as I mentioned, Testing their skills, we have a student team consisting of four students, Olivia Minner, Zach Rosso, Connor Nee, and Ali Sivarati. They'll be going up against our alumni team, the alumni Frank Merritt, Ian Charnas, Christina Collins, and Arkady Polankowski. And finally, they'll be seeing if they can beat out the faculty team consisting of Christine Duval, Michael Hoare, Harold Konemacher, and Everin Gurkin Kavusoglu. So welcome teams, we hope you're ready to play. Let's talk a little bit about how this game works. So we have two fun games planned for you. The first one is a take on Jeopardy, where we have a game board where contestants will be able to choose their question and their point value. We've made some modifications to the night. Unlike Jeopardy, questions will be in the form of questions and answers will be in the form of answers. Some of the answers will be multiple choice, some of them will be visual, and the teams will be able to confer with each other. They'll have 30 seconds to talk amongst themselves before they give us a final answer. Stealing from yet more game shows, we've also introduced a phone a dean metric where people will be able to call a dean for help if they get stuck on an answer. And we have three ranking university officials waiting on the line to help them out. Manoj Maholtra, Don Feek, and Chris Zorman are all ready to help our teams when they get stuck on one of the questions. After our Jeopardy rounds, we'll be taking you to our special presentation of the evening, the presentation of the Goody Excellence in, a, in Teaching Award, and we'll also have a speech from a surprise guest. After the break, we'll come back with a version of Family Feud, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So, without further ado, we're going to find out which of these teams is the best. They'll all get to figure out what it's like to be an admissions officer at the university, being relentlessly peppered by me with a series of mostly meaningless questions about Case Western Reserve University. So, without further ado, it's time to play the game. Right. We have four categories for the evening. Those categories are CWRU history, who's your dean, back to basics, and who's that faculty. We'll get to know each of our contestants throughout the course of the evening, but during our pre-show draw, it was determined that students will go first, followed by alumni, and then last faculty. So, to kick things off, we'll take it to our student team. Students, please pick your question. We will take history for 400, please. CWRU history for 400. In what year did CWRU host the vice presidential debate? 1988, 1996, 2004, or 2020? You can confer amongst each other, or if someone knows an answer, Call it out. Your team can tell you if it's not your final answer. What do you guys think? Definitely not 2020. There's yeah. that. <laughs> do we have any more information to you know narrow it down? 15 seconds. That? These are all presidential years, or like the, the right years. So no. 96 maybe. I feel like I would have remembered. Full support. Like that before. All right, 96. Yes. Sure. Their answer is 1996. And unfortunately, no, the answer was C, 2004. So no points on the board for the students, but we'll move on to the alumni team. Alumni, please pick your question. Thank you, Jim. We'd like crew history for 1,000. CWRU Whoa. history for 1,000. Your question is, what element's atomic weight was determined at Case Western Reserve University? Was it oxygen, nitrogen, neon, or osmium? Boy, that's even before my time. Was it oxygen? No, I think oxygen was before 1880 yeah. even. Oh, it case. I kind of want to say neon or osmium. Yeah, I'm... I, I thought all the weights were determined by when we formed Case Western Reserve University. I guess we'd be osmium, but... <laughs> There's not an E <laughs> answer. Yeah. 
coming up I, on I, time. I'm, I'm still going with oxygen. You guys can pick another. Oof. Oxygen is a popular one. I've seen a lot of people using that. You need your mm. final answer. I'm going to stick with Frank. I like Frank. I'm going I'm going to go with oxygen here. You are right. correct. The answer was oxygen. So that All is right. 1000 oh. points on the board and a commanding lead for our alumni team. Faculty, it's time to pick your first question. Okay, we're going to go back to basics for 200. Back to basics for 200. Not sure how basic this is, but what is the quadratic formula? You must actually state the quadratic formula. <laughs> All right, Mike, this is on you. Uh, it would be b squared plus or minus the square root of 4ac divided by 2a. That is correct. And 200 points on the board for the faculty team. So moving back around to the students, let's get to know some of our contestants a little bit better, starting out with the youngest contestant on our team, Olivia Minner. Uh, Olivia is a chemical engineering student, and uh, Olivia, it says here that you've taken pictures of all of the sculptures on campus. Can you tell us something about that? Well, it's not all of them. Uh, I'm not that good. But uh, the first week we were on campus in the fall, Actually, my RA had a building-wide competition going on where if you took the most pictures of sculptures on campus with your quad, you'd win a prize. Uh, I didn't win, unfortunately, <laughs> but it was fun running around taking pictures, mostly at night for some reason. Well, it may not have won you that competition, but hopefully the things you learned running around campus may benefit you tonight. So Olivia, if you would, please pick the next question for the students. Okay, we are going to do... Back to basics for 1,000, please. Back to basics for 1,000. And the question is, what process converts atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia by a reaction with hydrogen using a metal catalyst under high temperatures and pressures? So I'm tapping out. It's all you guys. Go, chemies. Hoppers. <laughs> Go with your... It's the name yeah, of the process. Hopper process. Final answer? You gotta go for it. Yeah, no, everyone else is saying no. Sorry, can you say the name of that one more time? Hobber. The Hobber process, that is correct. And that is 1,000 points for the student team to tie it up with the alumni. Moving on to the alumni, we had a late-breaking addition to our evening, Arkady Polinkowski, graduate of 2008. And uh, Arkady, we didn't have time to get to know you before the show, but I hear tell that you were the only person to beat Ian Charnas in a fire extinguisher battle. How did that happen? So Ian and I are some of the founding members of the Tesla Orchestra. And when we were uh, packing up to go to Croatia, uh, we had the coils packed up. We realized that we couldn't take our fire extinguishers with us. And mind you, we've been up for like 48 hours working on stuff. So to let off some gas, uh, we used our CO2 fire extinguishers on each other, and it was a lot of fun. That's, that's, that's the story. <laughs> well, hopefully you're going to have as much fun this evening while making a little bit less of a mess. Arkady, go ahead and please pick the next question for the alumni. We're going to, I think, stick with history for 800. CWRU history for 800. The question is, how many faculty and alumni of Case Western Reserve have earned the Nobel Prize? 14, 16, 18, or 22? B. Mm-hmm. 16. 16, that is the correct answer. And two for two on the alumni side. So moving on to the faculty, Starting with uh, Everin Kavusaglu. Everin, I understand you have degrees from three different continents. How to, Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, my undergraduate degree is from Asia, from Turkey. And my uh, master's degree is from United Kingdom. So that's Europe. And I have an MBA degree from Riverhead. So it's a well-traveled educational career. Uh, unfortunately, world geography will not help you tonight, but you do get to choose the next question for the faculty. So we will go with um, the faculty 600. Who's that? And this is a visual. This is a visual question. So take a look at your screens. Who's that faculty? And your hint is this faculty member is a current department chair. 
that's not true. Uh oh. <laughs> Do I have a bad? Go on, Harold. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> oh, actually. So see, we have our first blooper of the evening. I read the wrong <laughs> question. This, this, this faculty member won the Whitkey Award for Excellence in Teaching in 2019 and is part of the Computer and Data Sciences Department. That one's entirely my fault with the wrong question. Also, how did the faculty end up with that question? Harold, care to take a guess? That was a little embarrassing to see my <laughs> face pop up there. Yeah, that was a little strange. I, I feel like it we need to put that, put that back up there. But that is Harold Connemacher, and that is 600 points directly to the faculty team. So thanks for being a good sport on that one. <laughs> Uh, returning to the students, uh, Ali Civilotti, uh, it says you like uh, backpacking. Uh, where are some of the places you've gone? I've been all over New Mexico in Italy are probably the, the best trips I've done. Also, Conmagger, how do you get 600 points for recognizing yourself? <laughs> <laughs> the coincidence Allie, in that is that pretty one. stunning. I want to trash actually. talk to you before this night's over. <laughs> So it sounds like you've been on some grand adventures, particularly hiking in the, uh, in the Southwest is beautiful. So uh, Ali, go ahead and uh, pick our next question. We are gonna do back to basics for 800. All right, back to basics. <clears throat> it's a visual. So evaluate this limit. And there is a hint. This limit appeared in a popular movie about Lindsay Lohan joining a clique named The Plastics. What is the that limit? limit? Say again? What was that? The limit does not exist. That is correct. The limit does not exist. And that is 800 points for the students. Moving back to our alumni, Christina Collins. I yes. see multiple interesting things about you. You are a longstanding member of the CWRU Film Society. What's your favorite film that the Film Society has ever played? Ooh, that's a, uh, that's a tricky one. Let's see. Well, I can, t I can't tell you, but I can tell you that we're showing Porco Rosso tomorrow night and I've never seen it and I'm excited. Slipping the advertising in, always a good time to come and join <laughs> the CWRU Film Society, but you don't get off quite that easily because I've also been told that you can recite pi to 70 digits, and I don't think we have time for all 70. 3.14159265358979322348327950284197169309579494592307816. If there were points for that, I would award them to you right now, but as it stands, you get to choose our next question. Okay, what do we want, gents? About who's your dean for the maximum points? What do you? What oh, sure, that? why not? Easy come, easy go. Who's your dean for I 1,000? No All idea. right, so which Ooh. dean spends time at a cabin in northern Michigan? Is it Debbie Fatika, Don Feek, Mark Buckner, or Chris Zorman? D. Mm. Is this a time to call someone? No, I think it is. <laughs> Frank, Frank knows. He's, he hasn't guided us wrong yet. Yeah? Don't count on it. <laughs> Don't count on it? <laughs> yeah, no pressure or anything. No pressure, yeah. Let's go with D. D. Chris Zorman, that is correct, and 1,000 points for the <laughs> alumni. Living up on the Upper Peninsula, subsisting on a diet of nothing but smoked fish and Cornish pasties, I am sure. <laughs> Moving over to the faculty, uh, Harold Connemacher. It sounds like you've made a career of circumnavigating Lake Erie in your professional life. Tell us a little bit about that. That's, I don't know. That's just sort of how it ended up. I mean, I was born in Pittsburgh. I went to Oberlin. I went to Buffalo to get a job. Then I went up to, I, after a little bit on the West Coast, I went up to Canada in Toronto. Then I was in Michigan and now back here. So it's just, I don't know. I guess I'm just stuck with Lake Erie. Well, it's a good view of the lake from all possible angles. And uh, let's see if you can pick another question where you are the answer. Um, I don't think I'll do that. We'll go with uh, who's that dean for 800? Who's that dean for 800? Which of the following is Dean Balakrishnan's greatest achievement? <laughs> Putting together a desk from Ikea, performing in a rock band, running a 5K in under 20 minutes, or growing a blue ribbon zucchini? Ooh. Hmm. He's not on the phone of Dean, is he? He is not. <sighs> but they're deans. Don't, don't we have Zorman? Oh. <laughs> Wrong got team it. there, Frank. Like, that's not I know team. you've been faculty. <laughs> I just got into the questions. <laughs> 
I don't know. I mean, do we think he's a gardener or do we think he could be a rocker too? You know, I like, got a little bit about that streak of that. that. I see that. I bet he runs fast. I can't see IKEA being it though. No, nobody. He's an engineer. You know that IKEA would be expected. Final answer, faculty. Go for it, Harold. Five seconds. Uh, what do we say? Okay, we're going to go with C, running. That is correct. Running a 5K in under 20, in under 20 minutes is his team. finest achievement, self-reported. So this will be our final round. One more question for each of the three teams. Going back to the students. Students, please pick your next question. Can we do back to basics for 600? Back to basics for 600. It's another visual question, so please take a look at your screen. What will this Java code return? <laughs> That's me. Go get it, CS majors. Zero, one, two, three, four. Final answer? Yes. Oh, unfortunately, you'll have to no, take this one up I'm with the fail. judges because actually that code will not compile. That is invalid Java code. So something uh, of a trick question, unfortunately, stuck to our students, but zero points earned on this round. Yeah, Alumni, last chance for glory. Please pick your question. Sorry, Connor Magger. Um, I think we're going to do, who's that faculty? Should we aim for... Should we go for the tops? I don't know. The, that photo was hard. That's pretty hard. Yeah, it was. How about for 400 then? Yeah, that sounds good. Another we'll visual question. Who's that faculty for 400? Hint, this faculty member is part of the biomedical engineering department. Is that Andrew Rollins? It sure looks like him. What kind of dog is that? It might be something from the dryer lint trap. <laughs> and his uh, hairdo has changed. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, that's... Uh, no, I'm, I'm sticking with Andrew Rollins on that one. I agree. I, I'm going to do that, too. Final yeah. answer? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You are correct. That is Andrew Rollins for 400 right. points to the alumni. Yay. So finishing out this round, we go to our faculty for one last question. Faculty, choose your question. Who's that faculty for a thousand? Who's that faculty for a thousand? And oh. your clue is <laughs> this faculty member has designed video games. That's too small. <laughs> Looks like Mark Buckner. You think so? No, yeah, let's go. With I mean, my confidence is not very high on that, but <laughs> I squint. I know, it's hard to see. 10 seconds. Yeah, let's go with Buckner. Let's go with Buckner. No. That is correct. That is Mark Buckner and a thousand points to the faculty. So that is the end of our Jeopardy round. We're going to tally up the scores and see who is ahead at the beginning of our uh, first segment before we move on to our break. And do we have our initial scores? Well, we will in a moment. There we are. Students at 1,800, faculty with 2,600, and the alumni with a slightly commanding 3,200-point lead. So give yourselves a round of applause, but don't pat those backs too hard. There's plenty more game to play after we come back. But now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Raghu Balakrishnan, the dean of the Case School of Engineering, who will be presenting tonight's awards and special speaker. Raghu. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to the Engineering Game and the Goody Memorial Teaching Award presentation. Over the last year, we have seen the integral role engineering and science have played in combating a global pandemic. And over this past year, K School of Engineering students, faculty, researchers, and alumni quickly stepped up to the plate to contribute to solutions. I'm immensely proud of the work you've done and continue to do. Although E-Week looks much different this year, the spirit is the same. And the goal, to shine a light on the important contributions engineers make to society is even more meaningful. 
I'd like to acknowledge the people whose hard work and dedication have made this year's E-Week celebrations so successful. First and foremost, I would like to thank the student leadership groups who have spent months planning these events and activities and also taking extra steps to ensure they are accessible to all of our community, regardless of the location. You've done a phenomenal job of updating your events and coming up with new ones, in particular this evening's fantastic game show. Special thanks to Tommy Moad, President of the Case Engineers Council, and Joel Leinbach and Catherine Glace of the Peer Advisors Group for the extraordinary work you put in into making eWeek a success. To the members of the Case Engineers Council, the Women in Science and Engineering Roundtable, the Society of Women Engineers, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, the National Society of Black Engineers, the Engineering Peer Advisors, and the members of Phi Sigma Rho and Tau Beta Pi, congratulations to you and your classmates on a job very well done. I offer my sincerest thanks to the Case Alumni Association for their sponsorship and staff support, and to our corporate sponsors, Accenture, Rockwell Automation, Siemens, Lubrizol, and Underwriters Laboratories for making this event possible. Special thanks to Milani Joseph, Kelly Hendricks, Anne Borchard, Sheila Campbell, Erin Rees, Jenny Napidoni, and Debbie Fatika for their behind the scenes coordination. This evening's events would not have been possible without the expert help from the Media Vision team, who is responsible for coordinating all the technical details that went into the game show. Thank you. Finally, I would like to thank Mark Buckner, our Associate Dean for Academics. I announced earlier this week that Mark will finally be retiring from his role in the Dean's office. Mark, thank you for the energy, the enthusiasm, and the great good humor you put into all you do, including making this year's e-week a great success. You will, you'll be missed. And now it is my distinct pleasure to welcome a very, very special guest. Incoming Case Western Reserve University President and fellow engineer, Dr. Eric Kaler. President Kaler is an accomplished chemical engineer by training and a member of the National Academy of Engineering. He'll be joining us as the university president and as a member of our Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering in July. We could not be more proud to have an engineer of his stature and accomplishments as a member of our community. President Kaler, over to you. Thank you, Raghu, and thank you to the members of the Case School of uh, Engineering community uh, for a warm welcome. I'm so excited to be coming uh, to Case and to move into a leadership role uh, with you uh, in the summertime. Uh, and I'm also pleased to join you, although just briefly, uh, for eWeek. And I uh, now have to tune back in to see who wins the virtual game show. Uh, a modest lead by the alumni, but I think people will make the second half quite interesting. As a chemical engineer, I, of course, know well uh, Case Western Reserve's proud history as a leader in chemical and electrochemical uh, engineering. Uh, your institution, our institution, has produced an impressive list of alumni, including uh, Herbert Henry Dow and Albert W. Smith, the founders of Dow Chemical, and the founders of Lubrizol, Albert K. Smith, Kent H. Smith, and Alex Nason. We're excited for our students to follow in their foot steps and to earn a great education. But it's important for you to learn both in class and out of class. And that's why programs like this eWeek event are so important. They help ensure that we have a strong pipeline of diverse and well-prepared future engineers who will follow in the steps of those distinguished alumni I just mentioned. In just five months, I will join you on campus as Case Western Reserve's next president. And I look forward to the opportunity to meet you to learn more about the engineering school's excellent research, teaching, and innovative programs. I know that working together, we will continue to advance this excellence and we will grow and we will prosper. So for now though, I just wish you a fun and relaxing evening. Thank you for having me. President Kaler, thank you. Thank you very much for attending this evening's event. Normally, remarks like these end with applause. Zoom makes it difficult, of course. 
So the Case School of Engineering will proudly lead a standing ovation welcoming you whenever we have the opportunity to again celebrate in person. But for now, for now, a sincere thanks for joining and we look forward to welcoming you very properly this summer. Thank you very much. Thank you, enjoy your evening. Moving on, one of the highlights of our annual E-Week celebration is announcing the winner of the Srinivasa P. Guti Memorial Teaching Award. This award is presented annually by the Engineering Honor Society, Tau Beta Pi, to honor members of the engineering faculty who show an exemplary commitment to undergraduate teaching. This award is notable in that it's entirely student-driven. Each year, Tau Beta Pi members nominate and interview engineering faculty members and then vote on the award, award winner. This year, they've selected a faculty member who is celebrated for the passion she shows in her teaching, her ability to break down difficult concepts, and her willingness to always be available to her students. I'm very pleased to announce that this year's Goody Award goes to Deborah McGivney. Deborah, an assistant professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering, has been part of the Case Western Reserve University community since 2008, starting first as a PhD student and continuing in various research roles before joining the biomedical engineering faculty nearly two years ago. And now we will let the short video introduce you to who she is and what makes her so exceptional. I teach several core classes in the Department of Biomedical Engineering here at the Case School of Engineering. I teach the undergraduate biomedical signals and systems class, and this is a required class for all um, BME majors in which we focus on how to process and analyze biomedical signals. I also teach modeling of biomedical systems, and in this class we focus on how to develop mathematical models of all different kinds of biomedical systems. Ever since I was very small, I've wanted to be a teacher. Um, I had the opportunity to teach in the math department when I was um, earning my PhD. And so that was a, a great opportunity. And I taught many engineering students um, in the calculus sequence. Um, so I've always wanted to be a teacher. I like teaching things that are, are difficult, um, but what I like to do is take a very difficult concept and really break it down into um, organized blocks. I, I really like to organize information in such a way that I think students are gonna be able to better engage with it and more easily absorb it. So I, I really like to organize um, the material for them. I also really like when I'm, when I'm teaching, I like the interactions you have in the classroom. So I, I really like when students ask questions. I really like when there's participation. And so this has been very challenging, um, teaching online, teaching through Zoom. So I'm very much looking forward to being back uh, in the classroom. It's really lucky for us to have taken her classes because she's able to make those connections, uh, be easily approachable. I know she's a very busy BME professor doing research and also teaching classes. So uh, we feel really blessed that Professor McGivney is our instructor for two classes. And um, once again, congratulations, Professor McGivney, for winning the Talbot Up High Guti Teaching Award. Dr. McGivney, thank you so much for being an amazing professor. Thank you so much for bringing your passion to every day classes when you teach and thank you for inspiring not only students of our class but also um, students of future classes too. I want my students to remember me as being a very dedicated teacher, as someone who is very invested in their educational outcomes. Um, I also just want them to, to remember me as, as being a, a kind and engaging teacher. I only joined uh, BME about two years ago. And so to have um, this award from my students is, it's very, very humbling. I, I feel very honored. Congratulations, Deborah, on this well-earned recognition. We're proud to have you as part of our Case School of Engineering faculty and I'm grateful for all you do to encourage and inspire our students. 
And now I'll hand the baton back to Jim and the engineering game. Thank you, Dean Balakrishnan, and thank you, incoming President Kaler, for those kind remarks, and welcome to Case Western Reserve University. So welcome back, and welcome to the second half of the engineering game, where now we've swapped from playing Jeopardy to playing the feud, where it's time for our teams to stop thinking like engineers and start thinking like family. Let's explain how this is going to work. First, we've adjusted the scores because Jeopardy and Family Feud work on completely different scoring systems. Their Jeopardy score has been divided by 20. That divided by 20 score will then form the basis of their Family Feud score and eventually determine the winner of our game. Second, because there is no real easy way to buzz in uh, over Zoom and keep it fair, this will also proceed round robin. We'll each ask each family one question, and they'll have an opportunity to get as many points as they possibly can until they either clear the board or reach three strikes. Once again, we'll proceed in the same order as the first round. Students first, followed by alumni, and finally the faculty. And after the first round, we'll enter Final Feud, where one representative from each team will be hit with five questions to see how many points they can rack up to seal the game for their team. Here's our scores as they stand. Let's get ready to play the feud. <laughs> Students, you get to play first, and so as we set up our game board, it's time to put on your thinking caps and begin figuring out what you will answer. So, we asked 100 students, what is the hardest engineering class at CWRU? Top six answers are on the board. Students, what is the hardest engineering class at CASE? Ten what seconds. Does engineering class just mean like ENGR listings? It's any course guess. number or course name. Five seconds. Call one out. One forty-five. Engineering one forty-five. Engineering one forty-five. Show me one forty-five. <laughs> the number six answer on the board. Could you now, do uh, Java? 132. Oh, hang on. Now that you know how this game works, we will uh, proceed accordingly from here. But before we move on to our next question, it's time to get to know at least one of our participants a little better. Connor Nee, uh, I'm told that you actually enjoy dabbling in digital art. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I do. I actually recently bought a digital drawing tablet um, to pick up as a new habit, uh, like a new hobby that I'm trying. Um, I've tried some new things in college um, around new hobbies, picked up skateboarding as well. But Digital art's been my new passion, and I try to dedicate a couple hours each week to trying it out and practicing. Well, if there's one thing I know about digital art, this is as much math and science as it is artistic skill, so good for you. Wish you all the success. Connor, tell me, what is the hardest engineering class at CASE? All right, I heard Java on our team, so let's go for Java. Show me Java! <laughs> Ooh, unfortunately not. While it might be difficult for you, it appears not all of your student uh, cohort uh, agrees with you. So uh, finally, the last member of our student team, Zach Rosso. And uh, I understand you're something of a hockey fan, but Tampa Bay, hockey in a place where the sun uh, stays up all year. Yeah, a lot of people get uh, confused about that, but uh, Tampa's a huge hockey town right now. Uh, Tampa Bay right now. Um, winning the Super Bowl and the Stanley Cup. So it's pretty great. Um, yeah, I've been a big lighting fan for like several years. Uh, first heard about it when just some family came back down to Florida after being up north in Chicago. Well, certainly some amazing sports teams now down in Tampa and uh, all the best of ice sports and an outstanding climate. So uh, Connor, tell me, what is the hardest engineering class at CWRU? Let's go for 225 thermo. Engineering 225, show me thermodynamics. Yes, the number two question and 27 points. We've now met all of our participants, so now it's a matter of racking up the points. Students, tell me the hardest engineering class at CASE. Take a guess. Uh, let's go with 210 circuits. Circuit Lab 210. 
survey says. And it's the number one answer, 32 <laughs> points. Only three oh. answers remain on the board. Students, you get to choose the final engineering class at CW, or the hardest engineering class at CWRU. Let's do engineering 200, statics. Statics. So is it on the board? Show me statics. The number four, only two left. R put on those thinking hats. Think back to pain of semesters past and tell me what are the remaining two engineering classes that are really hard at Case. Um, can we do 131 MATLAB? Engineering 131, show me. Oh, unfortunately not. Two strikes, two answers on the board, one last chance for glory. The hardest engineering class at CWRU. Physics 122. Physics 122. Show me physics. Ooh, unfortunately not. But you did get the numbers one and number two answer, racking up a lot of points there. So before we move on, let's see. The number five answer, the hardest class at case. Math 224, Diffie Q. I actually had a really hard time with that one when I was on campus. And number three. There we are, EBME 308, Biomedical Engineering. So those are, according to our students, the top six hardest classes at Case Western. You did a great job there, racked up a lot of points, but now it's time to find out how our alumni are going to do. Alumni, time to put on your thinking caps because we have a new question for you. Think back to your student days, studying on campus, remembering what it's been like to be a student and have to get work done. Tell me, where is the best place to study at CWRU? Top six answers are on the board. KSL is going to feature in there. Should we try that first? Yeah. yeah. Show me KSL. Kelvin Smith Library, the number two answer in 28 points. So before we move on, let's meet our remaining two contestants. Frank Merritt, you have been everything at this university, a student, an alumni, a longtime faculty member, including a department chair. Uh, you actually have three degrees from this institution. Tell us a little bit about that. I have three degrees from this institution. <laughs> <laughs> what are the <laughs> what are those degrees in Frank? Because honestly, I don't know. All the time they that are I've in known electrical you. engineering, uh, electrical engineering, and electrical engineering. Every time I graduate, the job market collapsed. So <laughs> it was better to just stay in school and protect the American economy. <laughs> A fine strategy and one that worked out for you. I, uh, you were one of the first professors I encountered when I came to Case, so many fond memories there. Frank, tell me, where is the best place to study at Case? I thought it was the uh, pit in Bingham. The pit in Bingham. Show me, like show me Got Bingham. Ooh, no. apparently not as popular with students these days. But still two more chances to clear the board. And before we do so, we're going to meet our final alumni contestant, Ian Charnas. Of course, everyone who's on campus knows Ian. But what they may not know is, Ian, your favorite sport is playing the boomerang? I love the boomerang. It's the perfect sport. You don't need any friends. And if you get good at it, you barely have to move. So it's the perfect sport and the only sport anybody should be playing, in my opinion. Now, I haven't thrown a boomerang in many years, but I'm sure it would come back to me. But, um, yes, thank you very much. Ian, tell me, where is the best place to study at Case? I want to say Tink. Show me Tink. Ooh, no, a great place to eat, but apparently like not so a great place studying. to study. We apparently uh, really biased the students that we were surveying here. We still have five answers on the board and only one more chance for glory. So, alumni, tell me, where is the best place to study at CWRU? I, I, we could say Silver Spartan. It's a 20, I think it's still 24 hours. How hour. about just the tank? We All already right. did that I'm one. Sorry. I I would say the Allen Memorial Medical Library. 
but maybe Our that's still the best there. kept secret that everyone knows about. What do you guys think? I, I'm surprised I, you didn't say Thinkbox. There are some students who study at Thinkbox. I just see more. I, I see way more at the Tink, but maybe they, maybe as students from there. Maybe they won't cop to Nord. it. Nord. Uh, where? Nord. Not bad. Nord's good. Nord's a good one. We need a final yeah. answer. Nord. They're engineering. Why don't we say Nord? All Nord right. Let's take a look at our board. Show me Nord. The number one answer and 32 oh, points for the alumni. Instinct. You stay alive I, I, with the answer of the engineering school. Stay alive. <laughs> you still have one more chance to rack up those points. Tell me, after Nord and KSL, where is the best place to study? Should we say uh, well, Allen Memorial or should we try Thinkbox? I think Thinkbox for K students, uh, current students. I mean, I used to study at the Barking Spider, but I don't think that's around no, anymore. Got it, no more. Let's try a think box. Studying, yeah. sure. studying while the hum of 3D printers goes on in the background. Show me think box. Oh, unfortunately, mm. only the top two answers, but that's still quite a lot of points in this game. Let's see the ones you didn't get. Our number six answer. Peter B. Lewis. Number five. Sears. The number four answer. In your room or in your own uh -huh. dorm? It seems fairly huh. obvious. And number Novel. three. In Twing. 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 Yeah. So only two answers, but still a huge number of points racked up by the alumni. And so last but not least, faculty, it's time to think like a family and prepare for your question. Faculty, tell me, what does a CWRU engineering student do during class? Play on their phone. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think texting would be fair. Texting? Yeah. Yes, take, yeah. Phone related activities. <laughs> okay, I'm having some slight audio problems, but I think you said play on their phone? <laughs> yes. All right, yes. show me play on your phone. Social media, yes. That certainly counts as playing on the phone, and 19 students admitted to it. Uh, yeah, I, you know, is it actually fair that we ask students these questions? Should we not have polled uh, 100 alumni for these answers, or 100 <laughs> faculty for these answers? Well, unfortunately, they did tell me they did try to poll 100, 100 faculty, but uh, half the faculty told them that they were asking the wrong questions, and the other half are actually still talking to our interviewer. So uh, we'll get back to you if they come up with some answers. But in the meanwhile, we still have two faculty members we haven't met yet. Uh, first, Michael Hoare. Michael Michael, I uh, hear you have something of a talent for speed skating. Well, I don't know if it's a talent anymore, but at, at one point it was. Uh, were you, uh, uh, is this something you did competitively? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm from Northern Ontario in the middle of nowhere. And so in the wintertime, you can play hockey, you can get on a snow machine, or you can speed skate, apparently. So that's what I did. Excellent. Well, certainly not a common hobby in the States, but I uh, think everyone in Canada is born with retractable blades on their feet. So uh, certainly an understandable one. Uh, Michael, tell me, uh, what do engineering students do during class? They take notes. Take notes. Show me notes. The number two answer, 25 students diligently working in their class. And our last faculty member, last but not least, Christine Duval. Uh, I understand that you actually had a, uh, a job that I'm not sure I can even ask you about. You worked for the Department of Energy Office and Counterintelligence. Can you tell us a little bit about that or would you have to kill me? Would definitely have to kill you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, an yeah. interesting job nonetheless. That's fine. Yeah, I worked there uh, briefly before I came to CASE, um, and that's because my PhD was related to nuclear forensics, so kind of the CSI of catching people who have smuggled nuclear materials. Well, from cloak and dagger mm -hmm. to just the graduation cloak, a, a very interesting mm -hmm. career path. And Christine, tell me, what do your students do during class? Actively participate. Actively participate. Speaking up in class. Survey says. Pay attention. <laughs> yep. 
And only 10 of them admitted to that. You would think that would be a more common answer, but apparently not. Our number one answer is still on the board. Faculty members looking out into the audience, what are our students doing while you're talking? How about sleeping? sleeping. Everyone I would agree? say sleep. Let's I go think sleep. a nap. Absolutely. Sleeping, taking a nap in class. Show me falling asleep. The number one answer with 28 students admitting to doing this. And uh, we will be turning over all of their names to you at the end of the game tonight. So uh, just oh, for reference, fine. but there are still two answers on the board. What else do students do while you're lecturing? For me, it's studying for their organic chemistry exam, which is not my class. So I would say studying for another class. Studying for a different <laughs> class. Like Show me that. someone else's class. Homework, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether it's for this class or another, always have to get ahead. Why, uh, why pay attention to the current class when you can always be thinking about the next one? And uh, last but not least, the number six answer on the board. No strikes yet. Three chances to tell us. What else are your students doing in class? Is it a trick question? Are they not there? Five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Are they <Maybe> skipping? <laughs> not, uh, not, not showing, not showing up. Is not that showing uh, up. asking yeah. questions? I mean, maybe not while we're talking, though. So, well, um, final answer. Maybe skipping class. Yeah. Skipping class, mm -hmm. being somewhere else, possibly speed skating. Show me skipping. <laughs> oh no. At least not during class, they're all going to claim those participation what? credits. But there is one more thing that at least a handful of them are doing. What would that be? How about eating? Eating. Mm. Having a snack during class. Certainly something I can recall doing. Show me eating. <coughs> Ooh, but not in our survey. Only one more thing that about 10 students have admitted to do five. I did my math right, five. About five students have admitted to doing this in class. What is that last thing? What do you all think about talking? I think talking to a friend would be a- Talking to a friend? We'll yeah, go with that. I agree. Yeah. Talking to a friend, certainly a reasonable thing. Calling attention to themselves. Show me talking. <laughs> Ooh, no, but there is one more thing they thought they were doing, and what might that be? The number six answer on the board? <laughs> Crying. Oh. <laughs> five oh. students. <laughs> oh, faculty. I almost want to take that five points away. What are you doing no. to our poor students? <laughs> Crying in class. Well, you certainly can't be blamed for getting that last one, but... That is the end of our first round of Family Feud, and so it is now time to proceed to final. But with a quick check of our scores, the faculty have pulled slightly ahead with 225 points, followed by alumni at 220, students at 168. But it is now time for the lightning round of Final Feud, and there is plenty of time students to catch up. In fact, you get to catch up first. So, on the students team, who will be playing the final feud? Uh, I will. Connor, okay. Nope. So Connor, if Zach. you've ever seen the show, here's how it proceeds. Or Zach, I'm sorry, my apologies. Uh, Zach, um, if you've ever seen the show, here's how it's going to work. I'm going to ask you five questions. You need to quickly answer me with the very first thing that comes to mind. No right or wrong answers, just questions that other students agreed with you on. You have 30 seconds to answer all five questions, and then the number of your points will be tallied at the end. Understand what we're going to do? Yep. Let's get ready to play Final Feud. Zach. What do CWRU engineering students complain about most often? Amount of homework. Homework. What is a reason for a CWRU faculty member to be up at 1 a.m.? Rating exams. Exams. What item would be inside a CWRU engineering student's survival kit? Calculator. What is the most popular statue or building on the quad? Uh, Michelson Morley. 
And finally, what is a reason for a CWRU student to be awake at 1 a.m.? Studying our homework. Studying. All right. Our judges will calculate up your score, and we'll see how you did at the end. We're now going to unmute the audio for the alumni. Alumni team, if you can hear me, who will be playing the final feud? Jim, Ian Charn is here. Ian, okay. Ian, I have five questions for you. No right or wrong answers. Just answer them as quickly as you can. Your 30 seconds begins now. What do CWRU engineering students complain about the most often? I'm going to say the amount of math. What is a reason for a CWRU faculty member to be up at 1 in the morning? Writing the questions for the next day's exam. What item would be inside of a case engineering student's survival kit? I'm going to say caffeine pills. What is the most popular statue or building on the quad? It's definitely the Michelson Morley Fountain, but if I can't pick that, no, nope, nope, that, that's yeah. good. And what is a reason for a case student to be up at one in the morning? On um, video games, naturally, best time. Video of the games. Night. Surprisingly, no one has uh, thus far answered crying, which apparently is a popular thing for students to do, but only in response to faculty. And so we'll bring in our faculty team. Faculty members, are you ready to play the final feud? Who will be answering your last questions? I'm going to do it. Okay, Harold, we're ready to go. Your 30 seconds will begin now. What do CWRU engineering students complain about the most often? Grades. What is a reason for a case faculty member to be up at 1 a.m.? Writing grants. What item would be inside a case engineering student's survival kit? Face mask. What is the most popular statue or building on the quad? The spitball. And what is a reason for a case student to be up at one in the morning? They're just starting their uh, homework or project. Beginning homework. All right. All three teams have answered their questions. And so we'll give the judges a moment to tally up the scores. While we're doing that, I want to send out a special thank you to Joel Leinbach, Catherine Glace, and Tommy Moad for all of the time and effort they've put in this evening, uh, or in the past several weeks, to make this evening happen. Without them, nothing that you would have seen would have been possible. And so we thank them for all of the time and the hard work they put into making this engineering game a reality. So let's find out how our teams did and what the final scores end up being. So for the question, first question, what do case engineering students complain about the most often? The number five answer, numbers, pi, units or significant figures. Number four, sleep or possibly lack thereof. Number three, exams. Number two, the social life or Cleveland itself. And number one, lab reports and, uh, and the quantity of homework. For our second question, what is a reason for a faculty member to be up at one in the morning? The number five answer is family, children, or pets. I heard grant proposals and research coming in at the four slot. Uh, we have exams or writing exams in the three slot. Answering questions and emails at one in the morning. A lot of emails flying around in the middle of the night, apparently. And the most popular answer, why we think faculty will be up in the middle of the night, grading and final exams. The number three question, what item would be inside of a case student's engineering survival kit? We had six answers on the board. Number six being the eye clicker, the ever popular, don't leave home without it, eye clicker. Number five, textbooks. Number four, a thumb drive for all of that homework, which the dog apparently can't eat anymore. It was much easier when it was on paper. Number three, food or snacks. Number two, coffee and caffeine. And the number one answer, calculator, TI-84 phone or slide rule. Apparently we asked some very old students what was useful. Either that or we've got some very old school classes being taught at Case right now. But nonetheless, it slid in tools for the classroom at number one. Our question number four, what is the most popular building or statue on the quad in the five slot, the Michelson Morley statue? Number four, the Doc Ock statue. Number three, the ugly statue. Number two, spitball. 
and number one, the Nord Engineering Building. So last but not least, what is the reason for a CWRU student to be up at one in the morning? Nobody said crying, but our number four answer is the den, followed by number three of simple procrastination. No hour of the day or night is too early or too late to procrastinate. Number two, homework, lab reports, and essays. And the number one answer for being up at one in the morning is studying and finals. So our judges are working on those final scores and we'll be adding up all of the points. And in just a moment, we'll find out who the answers are or who the, who the winners are. The winner of tonight's game takes home at least the honor of a fabulous statue that is now going to become an annual tradition here at Case Western Reserve University. The statuette that is tonight's award will contain a ring for each year, starting with this year and moving forward annually, showing which team, students, faculty, or alumni, won the engineering game. That will be on display in the engineering dean's office in Nord, and will certainly be uh, one of the main challenges at Case Western Reserve moving forward that students will want to have their name emblazoned on each and every year. Will it happen tonight? We'll find out. But before we finish up, I would like to just send out one more special thanks to Mark Buckner uh, from the Case School of Engineering and Kelly Hendricks from the Case Alumni Association. Without their support and the support of the Case School of Engineering and the Case Alumni Association, none of this would have been possible. Thank you, Dean Balakrishnan, for helping us to make this happen and for hosting tonight's awards. And congratulations to all of the awards recipients and participants in this year's E-Week. We also have given each of our participants a memorial hat, but only one of our teams will actually be donning that cap at the end of tonight's programs as the winners of the 2021 engineering game. Check checking with the judges, we need just another minute before we have the final answers. So alumni, you were taking a commanding lead at the beginning of the first round, but fell off a little bit in the second half. Do you think you had enough points to pull this out? Possibly not. I never would have guessed students would be studying at night. That's <laughs> maybe a generation. how this thing works to add it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly Try times have changed a case since you were on campus. Students, were these few answers easy or hard for you? Were you able to nail them each? Do you think this was enough to pull you up and put you in the lead? I don't know about that, but we got spirit. <laughs> Case spirit is certainly welcome. And faculty, how will you feel if you have beaten your own students? Will this reflect poorly on your uh, course evaluations at the end of the semester? Oh, I don't think we have to worry about that because I think the students beat us. <laughs> oh, no, no confidence from the faculty. Well, the, the moment of answer. truth has arrived. It is time to find out which team takes home the engineering game trophy this year. Which team reigns supreme? The winners are... The students team with 303 points, <laughs> followed by the alumni with 289 and the faculty with 277. Students team, it is time to don your hats, put them on your head because you are tonight's winners and the winners of the inaugural engineering game 2021 E-Week at Case Western Reserve University. Congratulations, the ring memorializing the students as the winners will be put onto the trophy and that trophy will be in Nord now and for all history commemorating what you did here tonight. Give yourselves a great big round of applause. So we have now reached the end of our program. I would like to thank everyone who tuned in from home, everyone who participated on campus and from all around the world. Special thank you goes out to the Media Vision team, Davey, Dwayne, Byron, Tim, Shana, Mike, and everyone else who made tonight's possible, spinning the dials and pushing the buttons. We hope you had a great time. I'm Jim Kilmer, and until next year, I'll see you on campus. Good night, everyone. <laughs>